Good morning. morning. Welcome as we come to worship on this day the Lord has made. Um, First thing, this phone was found over by the uh, cemetery out here by the corner. Um, If anybody knows who, who, if anybody lost a phone, it was laying with the back off and the battery outside of it. We put it, we dried it off, put it all back together, and it's working fine, but we can't tell exactly who yet it belongs to until I start calling contacts, which I don't know if I want to do that or not. So if you know anybody that lost a phone, we got it. And I'm hoping it doesn't ring during church today. So I might take it out during the prelude just to make sure it's not in here. We want to continue to have prayers for Skip Petrie and for Patty Bestick and for Frank. Um, Patty keeps hanging in there, um, but it's just a matter of time. It's, it's, um, some days we don't think she's going to make it the next hour, and then she rallies again. So it's in the Lord's hands. We also want to pray for Dorothy Noggle. Uh, this week she got word that her uh, brother, Charles, out in Nebraska has passed away. So please keep Dorothy in your prayers. They were very close. Today the altar vases in the bulletin says it's sponsored by Jean and Miller Thomas, but it's actually sponsored by Bussy and Donna Schaefer to the glory of God. Today we're observing Harvest Home and we're going to be blessing the blankets. The blankets are there to be blessed and be sent on to those in need. They're not there because it got colder for you to wrap yourself around them. <laughs> uh, tonight, starting at 5 o'clock, we will have Kids Club. At 5.30 to 6.30, there'll be Catechism. And then Luther League is from 6.30 to 8. Tuesday evening, we'll have our third of our Bible studies. There's three more to go, a total of five. So if you uh, want to come out, and it's, it's just a really good study on uh, what we believe in. And I think everybody that's been there so far is enjoying it. Each week we get a few more. Next Sunday we will have anointing for healing. Uh, October the 30th, that's Saturday, the convocation for our Mid-Northeast Mission District will be, ho- be held up at St. Paul's Lutheran in Sarver. If anyone would like to go, please let me know. Um, it'll be my first convocation as dean, and I would like the support. <laughs> And we're also going to be stuffing the truck. So if you want to bring anything in uh, to stuff the truck, um, the mission, the NALC's disaster relief uh, person will be there for a big truck. And as everybody comes in for registration, they'll be putting items in the truck. Then the following day, October 31st, is our Lutheran holiday, Reformation Sunday. I ask everyone to please wear red. And then the ne- following Sunday, will be uh, November the 7th, that's All Saints Sunday, as we remember those who have died since last November 1st. Also, by the end of the month, all reports are due for the annual Booker Reports. Uh, We want to get the book printed that week, so by the first Sunday of November, anybody who'd like to pick up a book to read the reports, look over the budget and the finances, has a time to do that before we have our meeting on the 14th. And our annual congregational meeting will be on November 14th. Kathy Shawless and the office need to change the hours uh, in the office this week. They're different than what's in the bulletin. The hours are going to be Wednesday from 8 to 2 and from Friday to 9 to 3. And Pastor Myers asked me to announce that tonight the Hooversville Area Historical Society is meeting at 630 and then having a program at 7, and they meet at Trinity Church's social hall. Are there any other announcements, concerns to come in front of the congregation? If not, let us quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare for worship by listening to the prelude.
Please rise. We come to worship as we should live our lives in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please kneel if you're able. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise as we sing hymn number 315, the first and fourth verse. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of Christ, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For 
before this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, safe, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, our refuge and strength, since you yourself are the author of our devotion, graciously consider the devout prayers of your church. May those things which we ask in faith effectively follow by your grace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading for this, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost, is written in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, beginning with the third verse. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that is before its shearers is silent, so he, he opened not his mouth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm responsibly by verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. 
He makes his messenger winds, his ministers a flaming fire. He set the earth on its foundations, so that it should never be moved. You covered it with a deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the sound of your thunder they took to flight. The mountains rose, the valleys sank down to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. The second reading is written in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called upon by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The Holy Gospel this morning, according to the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Glory to you, Lord. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or on my left hand is not mine to grant but it's for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard it, they began to be indignant with James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of our Lord. To Christ. You may be seated, and would the children come forth at this time? Well, good morning. Do you like the cooler weather or do you like it sunny? Sunny? <laughs> the hunters are happy, though. We've got to give them a couple of days, huh? So, how many of you like to play follow the leader? Hmm. 
When you play a game, though, do you like to be it or the one in charge or go first? Yes. yes. That's how we all want to be, right? But it isn't, that isn't how God says his way is. That's the world's way, to be first, to always push your way to the top. But God says, no. The earthly way is to try to lord over people, be in charge, and have people serve you. But God says, my way is to go out, humble yourself, and serve others. Seek who needs help. Look for the one that doesn't know who I am and needs help to know that or needs help being, learning to do something or picking themselves up. There's a lot of people out there hurting these days. There's always been, but it seems like it's more prevalent today. So we need to be looking for our friends in schools whose families might be going through rough times, for that person we really don't know well that's always off in a corner and nobody plays with, to go over and say hi to them and talk to them, befriend them, to be a servant as God wants us to be, to show love to everyone. So that's your task for this week, to find someone who needs to hear a friendly voice and be kind to them and serve them. So let's hold our hands and bow our head. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for these children. We ask you to bless them, for them to follow your path, to show them how they can serve others and how they can help others out of love for you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's children say, Amen. Thank you. You can get your lollipop. It's a human ambition that's been around since literally the beginning of time. This desire to be number one, to have the best position, to have all the power, to be in the place of greatness. We first see it in the Bible with Cain and Abel. I told you, it was basically from the very beginning. Abel's offering was accepted by God. Cain's offering was rejected by God. Cain wasn't happy about not being number one, so he killed Abel. Sarah wanted to make sure her son, Isaac, was in the number one position with, her fa with his father, Abraham. So he made Abraham send Hagar, her handmaiden, who had borne Abraham, his son, Ishmael, away so that Isaac could have the prime position. Jacob tricked his brother Esau, his twin brother who was born first, out of his birthright, and then deceived their father Isaac on his deathbed, claiming he was Esau to earn the blessing. Jacob went on to have his favorite son, Joseph, placed him in the place of number one, showed that he had the power, and in Joseph's dreams that he told his brother he stated he would have the power, and the brothers didn't like that, so they sold him into slavery, and he ended in Egypt. It's that way all through the Bible, and it's the same in our gospel reading today. We have Jesus traveling to Jerusalem, as we talked about last week. He's journeying to that cross, and James and John come up to him and say, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask you. Kind of bold, isn't it? Can you imagine going up to your employer and saying, hey boss, I want you to do anything I ask you to do. Wouldn't get very far. But Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? And G James and John says, grant me, grant us to sit one at your left hand and one at your right hand in your glory. They knew they were heading to Jerusalem, but the disciples thought Jesus as the Messiah, who they all believed he was, was going to throw out the Roman authorities, was going to take over, 
was going to make Israel an independent nation again. They didn't seem to understand what Jesus had been trying to tell them. But who was this James and John? Well, before they were apostles, they were part of that inner circle, that close-knit group of Peter, James, and John that Jesus took with him so often. Before they were the inner circle, they were called as disciples, those 12 who followed Jesus faithfully for those three years as he did his earthly ministry. There were many other followers that came with Jesus, but those 12 were the core. And then before they were disciples, they were fishermen. They fished with their father Zebedee on the Sea of Galilee. They lived in Capernaum and led normal, ordinary lives until Jesus called them to follow him. Now, a couple weeks ago, we had the lesson how they were traveling together, and Jesus was trying to teach them, but instead of paying attention to what Jesus was saying, they were arguing who among them was the greatest. And they continued today. We see that all through the episodes of The Chosen, especially in season two, episode three. It's a very, very good episode. It's afternoon, and it's getting late, and Jesus had been out all afternoon healing, showing compassion and teaching the crowds. The disciples were taking turns being out there doing crowd control, although you really don't see what's going on out there. What you're mostly picturing is the disciples that aren't out at the crowds back at camp, doing chores, preparing the evening meal, and talking. And their conversations go like it usually does, saying, who is serving Jesus better? Who does Jesus count on? And as it grows night, and everyone's around the campfire except Jesus, for he's still with those, that group of people that need him, they keep arguing on who is doing the best job until it gets almost into a fight. But just as they're getting ready to really get in a confrontation, they hear Jesus coming. And he's not walking. He's more like shuffling his feet. He looks tired, exhausted, and wore out. He is dirty from the day of sweat and the blood of those he had healed. Mary, his mother, is in that crowd. And as he goes past the group, he just puts his hand up and down as acknowledging them and goes straight to his tent. And Mary gets up to go and serve her son, to tend to him, to wash his feet and his hands and his face. The disciples are silent. For a brief moment, they got it. It doesn't matter how they serve the master. What counts is that he is there to serve others, that he humbles himself, even though they realize he is the Messiah, the promised one. He is there to help others, to lower himself, to do whatever needs done to lift another one up. In our gospel reading, Jesus tells James and John, the cup that I drink, you will drink. With the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. In other words, it's not going to be easy to follow Jesus. Here again, the words that Levi read in the first reading. He was despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one for whom men hid their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. That's the most important way Jesus came to serve, to go to die on that cross, to be pierced, to be nailed, to receive those wounds for all of our sins that have been placed upon him. Those following Jesus didn't quite get it. 
not till after the crucifixion, not till after the resurrection, not until Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon them. The disciples learned what Jesus was trying to tell them. They had to be of service. They had to go like Jesus did to tell about the kingdom of God and to be in assistance to help others in need, to lift them up, to heal them, to give them hope. But they all paid for that in a glorious way, some of them thought, by their own lives. James was the first to be martyred as a disciple for following Christ. All of them face martyrdom. John went on to write the Gospel of John, as Matthew the disciple went on to write the Gospel of Matthew. John also wrote 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. And it's believed that is the John that saw the vision that is written down in the book of Revelation from the island of Patmos. Today, we are celebrating Harvest Home and the bounty that God, God provides for us each and every year. The blessing that he bestows on us, not just in crops and in beauty, but with the blessings in our lives, the things that happen in our lives that we should stop and glorify God for. I've always loved harvest time. I guess it's growing up on a farm that gives you that desire. And I always knew my father really got into, into harvest. Of course, every farmer does. It's where you see the reward for the hard work you've done all spring and summer long. And you want a good harvest so you can make it through the winter. But I never realized how important harvest was to my father until Larry and I were engaged. We were sitting watching TV one night in the living room and my father comes in and set down his chair. Doesn't look at me. He looked at Larry and says, so when do you guys plan on getting married? Never dreamed I'd have this conversation <coughs> with my father. I spoke up and said, I want an October wedding because I love the colors of fall. And Larry and my dad both spoke up, no, we can't get married then. That's corn season. Either combining corn or picking corn or cutting corn. No, we can't get married then. It's too busy a time. So between the two of them, they decided it should be between hay, second crop of hay, and combining of oats. So they chose August the 11th, 1974, for our anniversary. Always seemed very strange to me that it went that way. But as a farmer works for a harvest, God wants us to work for his harvest, to go out and raise a crop of believers in our own homes, in our own church, but to get out of those pews and to get to work out there to show others what it is to follow Christ, to tell others about our amazing Lord, and if necessary, use words, but always do it with your actions. And in all ways, at all times, give God the glory. Amen. At this time, we will have the blessing of the blankets. We can remain seated. God of love and comfort, we gather together to celebrate this ministry, and we give thanks for the opportunity, out of love and out of concern for our Christian brothers and sisters, to share a tangible gift to those in need. These blankets, while we know that you are always present in our lives and that your love transcends all tragedy, illness, and pain, we also know that sometimes a physical reminder can bring hope, healing, and peace to someone who is crying out. We pray that these blankets bring comfort to those who will receive them. O oh God, open our eyes so that we might see, open our ears so that we might hear, and open our minds so that we might know who is in need of your power and presence. Open our hearts so that we might reach out to them. Without even knowing who would receive them, these blankets were made specifically for the people who will receive them. May they see the intricate love and care given to these blankets. 
mirroring the intricate love and care that God bestows upon all people. These blankets were made to bring warmth to someone who feels a chill. May they feel the warm breath of the Holy Spirit as they wrap themselves around them. These blankets were made to bring comfort to someone who feels alone. May they feel comfort in knowing that someone prayed for them as they pieced it together. These blankets were made to bring peace to someone in need of prayer. May they feel the power of your prayers as they feel the material on their fingers. These blankets were made to remind the recipient that they are part of a community. May they feel touched by your love, moved by our guidance, and held by our support. Let us pray. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise you for the opportunity to take part in this ministry so that we might see a world beyond ours. We thank you for putting those in need on our hearts and in our minds so that we might fully live out your call to love and serve. We ask that you bless these blankets, those whose hands have made them and those who receive them. May they feel the love, comfort, and peace in your presence. And may your light shine in them and be a beacon of hope that is promised to all of us. Amen. I like to thank at this time the naughty ladies that put so much time and effort. I know a few of them are here today. Would you rise so we can thank you? Come on. <laughs> Thank you very much. And these will be going up to the Mission District uh, Convocation for stuffing the truck and be sent off to those who truly, truly will need them. Thank you. Please rise as we sing hymn number 231, verses 1 and 3. <laughs> our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again, ascended into heaven, and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you sent the Son to show us how to serve each other. Let us show our faith by being willing to lower ourselves into service for one another. Lord, in your mercy. 
guidance spirit. Please give guidance and wisdom to church leaders. We especially pray for our Bishop Dan Salbo, his staff, and his wife Mary. We pray for our mission district. Be with all pastors and lay people who stand on your word. Lord, in your mercy. King of the universe, we ask you to give wisdom and guidance to President Joe Biden. We ask for you to be with Governor Tom Wolf, with our legislators and local elected officials. May they all place their faith in you. Lord, in your mercy. God, our protector, be of all those serving in the military, especially those who are in harm's way. We also pray for first responders, our police officers and firefighters, along with those serving as EMTs and in the ERs. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the people of Ethiopia who are facing the civil war and unrest. We pray for the Ethiopian Evangelical Church, Mikana Jesus, as they minister to those in the midst of disaster. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the harvest, be with those who are working at bringing the harvest of crops in across the nation. May it be a safe and bountiful time. Lord, in your mercy. Redeemer, Lord, be with those coming home from New Jersey after helping clean up and repairing from Hurricane Ida. Lord, in your mercy. Healing spirit, be with those who need your healing hand, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We especially pray for Patty Bessick, Skip Petrie, Dorothy Noggle, Charlotte Lohr, John and Ginger Evancheski, Carl Wilder III, Kathy Butler, Libby LaDuff, Bill Hood, Donna Berkeybell, Carrie DeNorsi, David and Kimberly Lepchek, Jeff Darr, Barb Blau, Jane Helmers, and Cheyenne Bosey and for those we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort be with those who mourn and grieve for their loved ones. Give your comfort to the day we are all united in your heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated while the Lord's table is set. pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us always to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. and come forth as ushered. All who believe in the presence of Christ in this meal and are baptized are welcome. You may be part in peace. Render the body of Christ given to you.
have the body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Pastor, the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. pray. Ever faithful God, you have taken us again into your arms and nourished us as your dear children. Lead us and guide us that we may share our bread and your healing light with those who hunger and thirst. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now may Almighty God, who is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, bless you and guide you from this day forth and forevermore. Amen. Let us join in singing hymn 3041, verses 1 and 4.